Hello, in this video I'll be taking you through the main types of bridges with these 5 designs to hopefully give you all the tools you need to start designing your own, whether that be in survival, creative, with or without shaders. Then at the end we'll bring all the techniques together by designing a massive suspension bridge inspired by the Golden Gate Bridge, so let's get right into it. So let's start off with how to build a lovely stone arch bridge design. Firstly, just plan out the width, so 4 block lanes with a 2 block pavement either side. As this is an older style of bridge, the pavement might need to be more decorated, so you can use polished andesite and stone brick slabs for an older, tiled look. Similarly, for the street lines, I'm going to use quartz stairs instead of full white blocks, so it doesn't stand out as much against the old style of build. Just add a strong stone railing either side and then copy it to the length you want. So, I'm building up these pillars with just andesite for now, and to create a smoother appearance, let's use some walls in the corners. Ok, now make sure you're happy with the positioning of everything, and we can get right into the details. Starting with the arches. To add depth, these are going to be stepped back a block from everything else, and you can see I've just added some stairs above it. And I'm changing the texture to stone bricks to differentiate it from everything else. So now the cool bit, let's add the lining of andesite in the middle. Then adding some stone stairs creates a subtle, smooth line to separate it from the stone bricks. Where you want it to go down a full block though, just add a wall instead. And there we go, tough mixes in well with stone bricks to also make it look a bit grimy if you want that detail. On to texturing the pillars. So let's add some lighter highlights using this block palette here, with a nice gradient. Now the andesite walls are a bit dark, so we can replace them with diorite walls, which just blend in a bit better from a distance. Now I've done that for all of them and copied it over to the other side. Let's work on the arch underneath. Now usually I'd recommend adding depth to your build by stepping it back a block like this, but actually, in real life that would decrease the strength of the bridge as the arch is thinner, so it's more realistic to have this same supporting arch repeated under the rest of the build, just like this where I'm using the classic mix of stone and andesite. Right, we're nearly done. So next we can add some basic old street lamps using anvils and lanterns, which just adds some interest to the top. Here's also a design with two lamps, but that looks a bit too Victorian for my liking. Finally, for those of you that want maximum detail, we can add a scour apron around a base, which is basically to protect it from the erosion from the water. You can see that's also made the base look a lot more sturdy, and really brings the whole design together. Ok, now from an older design to a classic modern design, let's get right into the quintessential cable stayed bridge. This is a lot simpler than a suspension bridge as it just uses straight cables, so it could be a good one to start off with. Alright, to start let's plan the size. Let's do two 4 block wide lanes with a 2 block wide pavement either side. Then a block either side as a wall, totalling 15 blocks wide. Now usually I'd use grey concrete powder for the road as I did before, but this might give you some issues as you really want a nice slender aesthetic for that modern bridge look. So let's change it so that we don't need the blocks underneath. Then let's thin the edges by using slabs under the pavement. There, now I'll move it up. Then, if you don't like the dashed lines, you can cover them up with some support beams. And if you still want to use concrete powder, you can place a whole layer of slabs beneath for the concrete powder to then go on top of, which I'll do now. Next, we needed to add some railings to stop, well, people from falling off. But we don't want them to be too distracting. So just some light grey stained glass panes work well, then I'm going to put a line of carpets on top to make the railing a bit more defined. Let's now copy this across the Spanned River, then finally we can get to designing the main feature, the support and cables. Your first option is just two towers either side of the road, connected to two sets of cables. But I want to show you something a bit more challenging, that I think looks a lot cooler. Have the two sides and the cables meet together at the top. So let's get right into building it. I'm starting with a gradient of 4 and then transitioning to steeper gradients towards the top to give it a subtle curve up and a nice slender look. Then, at the top where it meets, you can add some grooves where maybe the cables connect to, just for some visual interest. Then do similarly for the bottom. 
Now, let's add the cables. You can see I've spaced out where they're going to connect by one block so that things don't get too busy. And we're going to have four cables and I'm going to use cobwebs. I'm going to be honest, this next bit is made a lot easier with the world edit line command, but I'll quickly show you some tips on how to do it without first. To make things easy, I'd recommend using gradients of across two every four blocks down, across three every four blocks down, across four every four blocks down, and then across five every four blocks down. Then as you do this, try to follow the size of your support which will give you a good idea of how many blocks to go across. Bear in mind you want to keep the cables straight though. There we've got one done. But if you're using weld edit, just use the slash slash line command and select the point you want the cables to attach to, making sure to space them evenly apart. Now it's time to add the details. Firstly, we need to thicken up the support at the base by making it a block wider either side. Then let's add some white stained glass panes either side of the slope to help it look more sturdy and to make it look a lot smoother. But you might still be thinking it looks a bit basic. Well, we need to add some variety to the texture and the best way to do this is through gradients. So let's make it a touch darker at the bottom using calcite. Then we'll add some diorite at the very base. Up close, you might think it looks a bit awful like bird poop, but from a distance, it looks a lot more gritty, realistic and grounded in its surroundings. So then just add the same effects to the base. And here's the final build. To finish off, I just extended the street a bit and added some street lights as a little example. And here's another variation on the design, with the lanes moved a block further apart, which allowed me to add space for a support in the middle. Okay, now let's move on from road bridges to rail bridges. Our next bridge design is going to be a truss bridge. Now although this looks simple, there are lots of things to do to add detail and realism, so let's get started. You can do a road bridge again, but I'm going to build two railway tracks along this bridge, each four blocks wide with a two block spacing. Then you can maybe add in some wood planks as a floor. For the tracks themselves, I like to use anvils, which look epic, but are very expensive. I mean, maybe you can show it off to your friends in survival, but it might be more practical to use deep slate stairs, which work just as well. Now I'm deciding not to use a wooden floor, so instead I'm going to place some slabs only where the sleepers are going to rest on. Then we can place some more structural looking smooth stone slabs below. Leaving the railway tracks with a lot of depth and detail which is really important for these Minecraft bridges. For our main trusses, I think a weathered metal look works really well. So to start with a base of exposed copper on the sides. Then we can add another layer of structural beams below to add more depth and now we can paste this across and work on the truss section. As you can see I've attached the bridge to stone supports at either end and this is where we're going to start. Just by staircasing up to a height you deem fit. The most important detail is texture so to get a very rustic look you can mix in jungle wood, copper and granite. Next, we're going to add both vertical and diagonal supports. To make sure they don't blend together though, I'm using walls for the vertical supports. Then our interesting diagonal beams can take the focus. A subtle thing here, but I'd recommend altering your block palette for different sections, like how I'm using cut copper and mixing in mud bricks for the diagonals, which I didn't use before, and how I'm keeping the lower sections comparatively very clean. Now we're finished, let's just shift it to the center and copy it to the other side. Finally, just the horizontal trusses to go. I know you're getting bored of all of these beams, so just add some walls at the intersections of the beams. And then similarly, we need to add a few diagonal trusses. For this, I'd recommend using slabs, otherwise it'll look a bit top heavy. Now, if you've been a bit silly like me, you might end up with an awkward intersection due to a two block center. To fix this, just shift the blocks out by one, leaving only four blocks where they all touch. You'll notice I've also changed the colour palettes between the beams to help with this problem. Let's not add them to every space to stop it looking too busy and top heavy. And there we go, our rail bridge design. But we've been playing on easy mode by building it straight. So now Fred's going to step it up by showing you how to build diagonal arch bridges. Yep, so diagonal bridges a whole different problem altogether. 
But maybe it's not with this easy method I'm going to show you. This is the exact method I used to design the Tide Arch Bridge on the Survival City. So I'll start by marking out a northwards length that I need the bridge to span, which is about 70 blocks in my case. I then mark out the angle I wish for this bridge to go at, which for this one is a 2 to 1 ratio. The next step is to plan your bridge as if it was straight, which in this case means I need to plan a smooth curve along the unangled line. Be careful when designing your bridge features, because when you transpose it onto the angled line, they will appear to stretch. This happens because the angled line is longer than the original one. This effect will be more pronounced the more angled you make the bridge. Now, all we need to do is combine the curve and angled line. I do this by building the curve again, keeping it in line with the original curve and the angled line below. I am now going to remove the iron blocks that I used as my templates. And here we are, the angled curve has been built without too much trouble. You can try and freehand it, but personally I would rather plan it out like this first. A small thing you need to consider when building these arches next to each other, you need to start the next one at an angle away like this, not just horizontally or your arches will look skewed. From here, you can do what you like with your curve. For me, on our survival world, I built one on each side of the bridge and surrounded them in copper blocks. I then added ties, a base and a road. You could, however, use this method to create the arches for a diagonal stone arch bridge or to be honest, any curve on any type of bridge you want to do at an angle. Okay, now let's bring everything together for a final challenge, the suspension bridge. So let's build the Golden Gate Bridge. For this video I'll be building it on a scale that much better fits Minecraft so that you can use all the tips for a larger build or a smaller build to build in survival. However, if you give the video a like, I might do a future 1 to 1 Golden Gate Bridge build or a skyscraper build, so subscribe to make sure you're notified for all of the upcoming videos. Anyway, oh yeah, suspension bridges. So we're going to start off pretty high off the ground with a mini truss section to support the weight of the road. So for this just a few stairs will look good, alternating top and bottom stairs like I have done here, then some granite walls down the middle. Now I'm going to do a three lane road with a pavement either side to fit the scale of this build. But you can squeeze in a fourth lane if you make the lanes three blocks wide and the pavement's non-existent. As you can see, I've pasted everything using world edit, but you can also use commands. Now for a bit of context, the Golden Gate Bridge began construction in 1933, basically at the height of Art Deco design, so its design incorporates a lot of ornate Art Deco elements. So here I'm thinking something a bit more textured for the railings like trap doors would work better than the minimalistic looking glass. So let's add a small railing on the inside of the pavement as well. Next, as with just the truss bridge, we can create detail through layers of trusses, starting with parallel beams to cover up the road markings, then beams which cross every 8 blocks, then copy this down 2 blocks to create another set of structural trusses to support the road. Alright, we've already got the first part done, so next let's get the towers in place. So start by just planning the basic size and height, roughly tapering in towards the top. Then you can add a few cross beams for stability. Don't worry, it's going to look pants until we get that iconic Art Deco design in. Just to mention, although it doesn't appear on the Golden Gate Bridge, you could use diagonal supports here if you want for a slightly different look. Okay, the details. We're going to thicken up the supports and add a second layer of outer blocks. Then we can turn this into a decorative curve using stairs and slabs. And for the bottom, we can extend the support down to add some more shape to the sides. Okay, now we've got a cool support. Just copy this up a few times and you've got a cool looking support tower. Don't worry, I will add the fifth section. I just initially thought it could get too high. Now, before we copy this across, we can just add a small walkway around the tower with some more decorations using, say, red never brick wall and then just extending it to the ground for now. So now is a good time to really perfect the shape. So first I'm just adjusting the height above the water and while I'm doing this I'm going to add some realism by having it slightly arched towards the centre. While you're doing this keep in mind the spacing of the towers, trust me because I ended up placing them too close. Now the final details. This base is still looking naff. So to make it look more grounded, we need to taper out one more block. Then it's important to add a stone foundation. 
but we can make it look more interesting by cutting into it, mixing up the textures and adding a smooth stone trim round the top to make it look very finished. I've also added a layer of darker stone and tarf to blend between the two sections. Finally, we can add some diagonal trusses down here for some extra detail. Okay, I know it's been bothering you, but we need to add another section to this tower. This is going to make everything a lot bigger, but it's definitely worth it because this now looks a lot more epic and realistic, just like the Golden Gate Bridge. All right, with that copied to the other side, let's add the cables. So the cables in the suspension bridge form a catenary or a cosh curve, which is basically the average of a positive and negative exponential. Or you can just do it by eye. If you're doing this, I'd recommend starting, weirdly, with the vertical cables for which I'm using walls, as in Fred's design. And so I'm planning out now, spaced seven blocks apart. Doing it this way, it's very easy to adjust the curve just by altering the height, as opposed to using the line command as we did before. Then once you're happy with the shape, you can use lines to connect each of the sections. This then looks a lot more natural than doing the top line first, because any changes in the gradient occur at one of the vertical cables as opposed to changing in midair. Just a subtle thing that makes it a bit more realistic. Just copy this to the other side and don't be shy of making a lot of adjustments, don't worry. Next, we want to work on the cable that we'd be anchored to the ground. Now, because this cable would be under a lot more tension, being anchored as opposed to just under the weight of gravity, it would be a lot straighter, almost a straight line. As you can see I've done here, I've probably curved it too much though to be honest. Copied again to the other side now, you can see here how it might anchor into a big concrete block. I'm not going to detail this though in this video. For our last details, we need some retro street lamps to light it up at night. These need to be subtle, so I'm going to use fences for a thinner look, five blocks up and then some lanterns for the lamp, as opposed to a full block. Nice and subtle to add some detail as we copy it along the bridge. Then let's light up the towers with some subtle hidden lighting, just by placing some torches covered by trapdoors, which then light up down below. And there we go, our final build. I've extended it to the right length now, which is a lot longer, which meant I had to completely redo the whole cable shape. So please subscribe. So yeah, here we are. I hope you've enjoyed this video and all the tips. There are so many types of bridges, so if you'd like me to make a part two, just let me know in the comments. I'd be excited to make, say, a trestle bridge or a cantilever bridge, just to name a few. But anyway, thank you very much for watching.